I've looked around a lot recently and contemplated this weird dystopian world that we're living in in 2021. And there are definitely some real world eerie echoes going on right now. But it's not the first time that the world has been similar to such a movie. You've probably heard of China's one child policy, or maybe not. So here we go. The miracle of childbirth is a wonderful thing. Few things can compare to the moment a parent finally holds their baby in their arms. Their first breath, their first cry, their first laugh. All of these things are immeasurably beautiful. However, in some cultures, a newborn child can be a disappointment and an unwanted burden before the child is even born. You see, in China, due to the density of the population in the mid to late 90s, parents were only allowed to conceive one child any more would be considered a criminal offence. For this reason, many parents would be desperate to conceive the perfect child the first time around, meaning that any child born with a deformity or disability would be considered a failure. So too would be having a baby of the wrong gender, i.e. baby girls. You see, having a son meant ensuring the continuation of the family line. So to get around these laws, a truly awful trend began to emerge a trend that would see parents abandon their children in orphanages known as the dying rooms. This disgusting trend that had become a dark and gritty part of the culture in China was made public knowledge through the help of a Channel 4 documentary, which is currently available to view in full on YouTube. Two investigative journalists, Kate Blewett and Brian Woods, would direct this documentary, travelling undercover through China and filming the goings-on in these death orphanages. The film begins by showing the frequency that children turn up within the orphanages, abandoned on the street by their parents. The one that the crew begin filming at had received 10 babies that month already and predicted the arrival of another 25. So why had this become a trending phenomenon? The one-child policy was originally introduced within the country in 1979, following the apparently successful two-child policy of the early 1970s. The two-child policy had already averted at least 600 million births. Its success was seemingly reflected in the steady reduction of China's social, economic and environmental problems, as well as its rapid technological development. The one-child policy aimed to alleviate these issues even more substantially and curb a then-continuing surge in population. While the residents had been displeased with the original two-child policy, the one-child policy and the extreme measures taken to enforce it were viewed by some citizens of China as being beyond barbaric and others as wholly necessary. It began tearing the nation apart. The government offered its de facto backing to anyone who aided the enforcement of the law. Neighbours and friends were encouraged to be informants on one another. Females who were found to be pregnant despite having a child already would be forced to get an abortion without any choice in the matter, with rumours of their loved ones being locked away until they submitted. The government would cut off people's water supply, their electricity and in some cases homes were completely destroyed. Human rights laws were overlooked daily in China during this period and, in the end, families would eventually concede out of fear or lack of options. In other cases, women were forcefully admitted for the procedure. Many of them would also be sterilised without their prior knowledge or consent, preventing them from having any other children and disobeying the government again. These actions showcased the heavy-handed approach that China took to uphold this law, leading to a nation of unrest. In most cases, where the existence of a second child was concealed from the government into birth, a secret, and by secret I mean everybody knew about them but no one could do jack shit so they turned a blind eye, a secret set of orphanages were opened to house these unwanted children. Whether taken by force or by willing parents who wanted to remain to be seen as upstanding families in society, allowing them to avoid punishment by the government, the end goal for many of these orphans was not rehoming. Enter the dying rooms. These orphanages aptly named the dying rooms were by and large run down, understaffed and under-resourced buildings. The majority of babies, although in some cases older children, were abandoned simply because they were not male or because they had a life-altering disability. 
some even because they had a simple deformity or were considered not beautiful. This led to these off-the-books orphanages looking after more children than they could feasibly care for, leading to conditions that were frequently inhospitable for any human to grow and thrive. Children were rarely cleaned, left hungry and thirsty and were in most cases severely neglected. Some were even tied in place by a rope to potties or bound up in newspapers so that they didn't move. Children with illnesses were often deliberately ignored even when medicine was available in the hope that they would pass away. They slowly died through hunger, illness or other explainable oversights such as cot death. The children who, against all odds, grew older were for the most part left essentially feral in nature, having never had much human interaction in their lives. They were left unable to reintegrate into society, often staying in the orphanages their whole lives. Most of the orphanage staff had absolutely no formal training whatsoever, and despite a government grant, very little had been done to strengthen these orphanages' workforces or resources. The only saving grace throughout this tough period was the privately run institutions within China. These facilities were kept afloat from charitable donations from the Chinese people and their level of care was leaps and bounds ahead of the dying rooms. Children were nurtured, cared for and kept healthy. They were even educated as best as possible. However, these orphanages would often be at capacity, meaning the parents of second children would be forced toward the alternative, toward the dying rooms. The documentary by Blewett and Woods would shock the international audiences that viewed it and led to a mass appeal to improve the situation in China. Meanwhile, within China, the media were quick to dismiss this documentary as fabricated claims and even made their own counter-documentary titled The Dying Rooms, A Patchwork of Lies. Despite these claims, the neglect and conditions caught on camera could not be disputed and from then on, there were eyes on China from the international powers of the world, aiming to pressure the communist state to improve their facilities and abide by human rights laws. As of the present day, China is no longer a communist state. However, despite the capitalist system, there is still a lingering communist regime in the ranks. Yet, even with a government that views human rights laws as a secondary concern, there has been an upheaval in orphanage resources and care since the 1995 documentary. Children are cared for and nurtured and are educated. However, it is still reported that for many of these children, adoption is a pipe dream. The one-child policy was a destructive and divisive one. It was a problem that China is still recovering from as a nation today. Women are in short supply in China as a result of the events, and the shame that it brought to the nation is still something that many have to live with today. Reducing population size by any means necessary may have indeed worked, but at what cause? It's interesting to consider what China could have done differently to curb the population issue. It's one of those dilemmas that makes me glad I'm not a big decision maker because I just don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until we speak again, sending you good vibes. Stay safe out there.